Well, thank you again, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, we're really excited um, to have two of um, the Solidarity Campaign Partners of Community Alliance for Global Justice with us tonight. Um, one is Community to Community, which um, we all affectionately refer to as C2C, um, which is an eco-feminist organization based in Bellingham, Washington, a couple hours north of Seattle, um, led by and for farm workers. Um, there's core staff, there's community organizers really been on the front lines during the COVID crisis. Um, currently, one of their staff, Liz Darrow, is running for Bellingham City Council, which is very exciting for reasons that um, come out of, of their longtime advocacy for immigrant rights in the community. Um, also do really important work supporting solidarity economies with so their work building cooperatives, including the Cooperativa Tierra y Libertad, the cooperative run farm that we've visited the last few years um, and we'll probably visit again this summer. Um, and C2C also supported the formation of and has worked really closely with our other partner, the Farm Worker Union Familias Unidas por la Justicia, which means Families United for Justice, um, who were founded 10 years ago, amazingly, um, and represent over 200 families um, who work at the Sukuma Brothers Farm. And they signed their first collective bargaining contract with Sukuma in June of 2017. Um, our independent farm worker union made up mostly of indigenous folks from from Mexico. Um, and we've just been incredibly inspired by Brenda and C2C's artivism team. Um, and I mean, all of your farm worker organizing is incredible. And we're really honored to work in solidarity with you all. So just really appreciate you being here and excited to learn more tonight about your work and your vision for how art and movement building work together. And so thank you again for everyone who's here and I'll pass it off to um, Brenda, Jackie and Misha from community, community to Community who are here with us. Hi, um, I'm Misha Blackthorn. Um, I use all pronouns. Uh, I've been working with C2C for about five years. Um, yeah, oh, and we're joining from um, Bellingham right now, uh, Lemmy and Nooksack clans. And I'm Jackie Tabone. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, and I've been working with C2C since around 2017. Can you go a little louder or come closer? <laughs> and I'm Brenda Bentley. I've been uh, the coordinator of the C2C Dignity Vigils, Direct Actions, and the Art Department since 2017. So thank you all for having us here tonight to you know, share um, how important um, artivism is in the movement. And um, you know, artivism, unlike you know, fine arts and political policy, it uh, doesn't uh, require like uh, specialized knowledge to get it. And so, you know, it lowers the barriers to participation and um, the act of like making art, making music in our movement spaces, uh, you know, it allows us to feel joy and to celebrate, you know, while we're in the struggle. I also think it's like one of the ways um, we take care of each other, you know, because um, what we're doing is long haul work and, um, some, you need to um, enjoy the work when you can, and um, artivism is one way of doing that. So we're gonna to go to our first image that we wanted to share. Yeah. So um, we wanted to acknowledge the influence ancestors have on our work. Uh, Jesus Guillen was the father of Rosalinda Guillen, CDC's founder. Uh, he was a farm worker. He was a self-taught artist. And, uh, well, you know, with the eyes of an artist, he shared his love of the beauty of the Skagit Valley uh, while he was working in the fields. And um, you can see that comes through in his paintings. And I think um, because Rosalinda um, has that deep appreciation of art, um, and of artists' labor, 
we have the art department at C to C. This painting um, is called Chisme, <laughs> and uh, it hangs in the Skagit College Library. So if you're in the area, please do go stop and have a look. So yeah, this is um, early days for me, 2017. I basically came to Rosalinda from the picket lines out in Everett and asked her what I could do. And she said, you can coordinate the dignity vigils outside Bellingham City Hall. I said, okay. And then I went home and I said, what is that to myself? And um, you know, what it was, was that um, just before I arrived in Bellingham, um, the community uh, members had formed a uh, an ordinance, a people's ordinance to make Bellingham a sanctuary city. And um, the city council rejected it and passed their own. It was basically a useless, toothless ordinance and actually quite harmful because they announced it to the public and it was very misleading. So for three years, um, every Monday, rain or shine, we would gather on the steps of city hall and this space became like a um, place for participatory democracy. Um, community members would come and share information with each other um, and we would share it out to the community. The space evolved to um, pivot to the moment, you know, like when there were um, uh, crises happening with farm workers, H2A guest workers out at Sarbanon Farm in the county. Um, we would um, change our messaging to address that. So, um, you know, the red banner also is one of my kind of first C to C art um, asks from Rosalinda. And, um, you know, um, I come from like a, the punk rock community back in the 1970s. And um, we always had the DIY attitude of just figure it out and do it don't ask questions. So um, after three years of vigils and community pressure, um, you know, we now have a city immigrant advisory board with farm workers, promotoras um, on the board. And these t-shirts, um, <clears throat> we hand stenciled. Again, I think it's that old punk rock thing in me. I just love hand stenciling stuff. And um, when people would come um, who were local and they wanted to buy one, we would invite them in to make their own. And that gave us um, an opportunity to, um, you know, connect with them and talk about the issues. And I think it actually feels better when you make something and you put it on, it feels really special. This was also the first um, project that I got involved with C2C uh, for. So it yeah. was fun to be able to like, <laughs> yeah, stipple away, just like take the paintbrush and like da 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 da, and like kind of get out some rage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, during the vigils, we decided to escalate a little bit and we had a uh, guerrilla uh, theater of, um, you know, a mock closing of City Hall. And, uh, but the condemnation was real because um, they were failing to uh, take us seriously and do anything to, to put in any kind of protections for immigrants and undocumented people. Mm. Um, the banner that you see in this image uh, was gifted to C2C when we visited the Latino men's group that had organized inside the Clallam Bay Correctional Facility. Um, their, their group is called Nuestro Grupo Cultural. And um, this was made from bed sheets and um, painstaking work and beautiful work that they did. And I remember at the time, I know uh, Tomas was there as well, um, how emotional it was. Um, and how uh, meaningful it was to receive this gift. Um, it now, it hangs in the C2C Skagit Promotora's um, Centro in, uh, yeah. So we, we really love that piece. Mm. So, you know, um, we really recognize that art is a valuable teaching tool. 
and that not all people learn in the same way. You know, I'm one of those that like, I learn better through images. I find that really helpful. And um, what you see here are like the Wacom promotoras and their families um, viewing the paintings of farm workers uh, by Antonio Gonzalez. And he was um, a C2C artist from a farm worker family. So um, art is like a great opportunity to like, not only are you appreciating the art, but um, to talk about the issues that affect farm workers, um, things like heat stress, um, pesticides, um, yeah, things like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so C2C hosted um, the US Food Sovereignty Members Alliance um, in Bellingham. And we put on a two-day cultural event called Animo. And in this photo, there's like FEJ members and their families. They're enjoying art made by uh, farm workers and other artists in the movement. In fact, um, I think in the background, those are Edgar's photos. And um, the Camp Zapata is also in the image and t-shirts, um, you know, from the archive of all the years of work. Um, that C2C has done. It's um, even our art shows are about kind of connecting people to the history of our work and what's happening now. Uh, um, yes, this is from the same show actually. And um, it's kind of one of my favorite pieces because um, my compa at the time, Maureen Daras, made this uh, using my old life right. And, um, you know, it's a child's toy and um, she used it to speak about child labor and I really wish I still had it. <laughs> uh, the, the Hulk image, that's uh, Edgar's brainchild. Uh, you know, when we have vigils, like the youth, um, they always wanna hold this one. And, um, this was when Edgar was with C2C and we would like take turns painting it or we would all sit around after a meeting and paint this together. And, um, you know, it's important that we think about youth and include uh, the youth in our art and in the movement. And Wafla, um, the Latteria card depicts Dan Fazio. He was, uh, um, he is the former director of Wafla who import H2A guest workers. And um, the Farm Worker Solidarity Collective from Evergreen, their students, um, they would come to C2C for art builds and for messaging for their um, vigil that they were having um, right across the street from the Wafla office. And this kind of um, solidarity of people like taking the initiative in other places and amplifying the message is like really important. Um, this is a poop emoji. <laughs> yeah, gotta keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, in uh, 2020, um, the COVID-19 pandemic had started. Uh, farm workers were saying they were not uh, being given proper PPE or able to social distance. Um, a lot of them live in barrack style housing, so it's impossible to um, keep yourself safe. So um, we made this coffin and we traveled to Olympia to have a rally. And um, this is the coffin and we're having a, a mystica here and uh, farm workers are placing apples on the coffin because um, around the same time workers at the apple packing sh uh, companies in Yakima uh, began a wave of strikes uh, no PPE, no social distancing, no uh, hazard pay. Uh, you know, they wanted to work, but, you know, they didn't want to die. Um, Familias Unidas por la Justicia was there supporting the workers for months. And uh, out of that, um, a new union was formed, TUJ. This also, I think, was across from Allen Brothers, um, one of the packing uh, companies. 
and two of the workers decided to go on a hunger strike. And we held a mystica. Um, yeah, mystica is kind of a way of us fully uh, making a space in the moment and, and also committing ourselves to the movement. Um, also, mystica can be whatever we need it to be. Um, so prayers were said for the hunger strikers, and um, I made this small mystica altar with the uh, apple pickers um, bag and uh, life-sustaining water. In the um, corners, that's um, where the um, hunger strike strikers would sit. And speaking of mysticas, um, on the left is an image from a mystica that we had on Cooperativa Tierra y Libertad, which, yes, from a girl in Co-op, Whatcom County. Um, and this was, yeah, this was around 2020. And, you know, we thought it was a good time to gather after, you know, several months of isolation. We wanted to reconnect with each other and also put up an altar to honor the farm workers who had passed due to unsafe working conditions. And um, on the right, so that image was kind of bright or brown. You know, during this time, there was a lot of talk around like essential workers and who is an essential worker and farm workers were often being left out of this conversation. And so yeah, this shirt, the image was created by Antonio Gonzalez, who has since passed. Um, you can also, not right now, but later um, behind us, we have a painting who is also by Antonio Gonzalez. Um, but yeah, that was to amplify um, the demand that farm workers are essential and that they deserve safe working conditions and access to PPE. And then these signs I uh, painted kind of at home on my own because it was still kind of during lockdown. And so these were to prepare for any upcoming strikes. Um, we were just kind of, you know, taking that time to uh, be ready for when that did happen. And yeah, because, you know, often kind of like above, um, farm workers are left out of emergency responses like with COVID and with the flooding that happened, um, wildfire smoke. And then, so for these, um, both of these images were made for a strike against Washington Bulb Company around March, 2022. And so, as you can kind of see the image on the right for FUJ, um, was influenced from the sign that was used in the strikes. That you painted mm -hmm. <laughs> beautifully. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is funny. It was one I kind of like just started doing and it, it turned out well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, it's also, you know, it's a good example of how art can be used and reformed in new ways and in different medias, um, you know, like one was hand painted and one on cardboard and the other was done on Procreate on an iPad. And that was also the first um, project that we worked on in Procreate together. So yeah, that's kind of an exciting thing that we've been um, exploring is like digital art for C2C. Um, it's a whole new world. <laughs> yes, lots to learn, which is like exciting. And yeah, you kind of like learn as you're doing the project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I think another thing is, yeah, the images, you know, we, want to we wanted to reflect in that image um, FUJ style since it is different and distinct from C to C. And then, um, yeah, for the tulip strikes, it, you know, it always just feels really powerful to see this like sign that you made um, that's, you know, it's just kind of like this cardboard sign and then um, when you see it in the context with everyone there, um, it just kind of turns it into like a tool and like a way to communicate 
um, what farm workers are asking of at that time. And, you know, it's also great to have the signs just around you to have that like beauty and the color. Yeah. And bring everybody together. Yeah. And then, yeah, so this one is of, there's me tabling <laughs> with other folks. Um, and, you know, for, you can see like the t-shirts and the pins um, and some stickers. And, you know, the main way that like these were created and how movement art is different than personal art is that we take guidance directly from C to C community organizers, as well as farm worker leadership. Um, whereas if you're doing it on your own, you're just kind of like, I mean, people have a lot of reasons for doing art, but it could just be, you know, oh, I'm gonna just, I have some free time, I'm gonna paint something, you know? Um, and with tabling, you know, it's also an opportunity to, you know, have folks come up to the table um, and have a conversation and learn more about the current issues that are impacting workers and immigrants and the work that C2C is doing around that and how folks can help support it. I just wanted to add also that um, I hand stenciled everything in this photograph and I'm so grateful to have um, help <laughs> and to have this team. More, um, more Many hands, many hands gets it done. It's just um, so much more fun to do it that way. That's, that's a big thing that like came up when we were talking about this too, is just like how many different people are involved in like most of the projects that C2C does, like from the ideas, um, you know, through kind of like figuring out what materials to use um, through actually making things like there, it just passes hands so many times. Um, it's really a collective process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, in 2017, Onesto Silva Ibarra passed away after being forced to work in the heat and intense smoke. Um, 80 of his colleagues protested and were subsequently fired. And when they were fired and told to leave their on-site housing, they set up camp on a neighbor's property and organized themselves. They chose the revolutionary Zapata to be on the banner in front of what became Camp Zapata. Later in 2017, local farm workers and FUJ workers went on to form Cooperativa Tierra y Libertad, a worker-owned co-op. Um, under the H-2A program, workers are exploited. The profits made from their labor are stolen to line capitalist growers' pockets. Um, so the formation of the co-op farm is an example of a just transition away from this kind of exploitation. At Tierra y Libertad, all decisions are made by workers. They decide when to take breaks, the pace of their work, and the conditions they work in. In solidarity with the workers at Tierra y Libertad, we donated labor and materials to create um, this sign using the image that had once represented Camp Zapata and is now the logo of Cooperativa Tierra y Libertad. Um, we made these large cloth banners as an educational tool to share the principles and values that C2C and Tierra y Libertad have used for co-op development. Um, we constructed them to be sturdy so they can be folded up um, and brought to different events and hung up for trainings uh, to help form more cooperatives. Um, as an art team, when we work on projects, um, some of the things we think about are like, where will the art be used, if it's going to be outside or inside, if it's something that's going to be reused for years and years, or um, something that's like for a specific action with very specific messaging. Um, so we often make banners like this uh, that was used at the um, May Day March. Um, out of canvas uh, because it won't crack or fade very much over time. Um, it can also be rolled up and stored. Um, and then, yeah, for more immediate actions, um, we often use cardboard or just materials that uh, can be found or recycled materials. 
Um, and for actions, the messaging is always coming from farm workers and community organizers on the ground. Um, yeah, this was uh, just kind of a sneak peek of the process of um, making one of the banners for the for the May Day March. Um, and uh, having trouble like figuring out the spacing of the letters. So ended up like <laughs> cutting out all the letters from felt and like using that to place them on. So that was kind of like a fun problem solving process that ended up being uh, yeah, a double sided cloth banner. Um, and it was really cool to see people carry those um, just like, I don't know, having the holes you could really, I don't know, people are like dancing and waving around with them and it was just very, <laughs> joyful and yeah that was a big thing from that march too that um like both c2c and fuj independently had kind of come to the like idea that um like they wanted this march to be really like a celebration i think i feel like you could speak to that a little bit more um yeah i think like uh some of our marches in the past you know we've been um either you know, it's been pretty serious going out to uh, Cybernon Farm to confront the uh, bosses there and to, um, you know, um, honor Ernesto Silva Ibarra and to press for justice for him. Um, some of those were 19 mile marches as well in the heat. Um, and uh, this March, I think after um, COVID and then, um, you know, with the, the tulip bulb strikes and um, everything that happened there, it's like we really felt like we wanted to show the beauty and celebrate the workers. Um, you know, look, we've got a beautiful sky today and um, it's not always beautiful, but um, in this moment, it was beautiful. Um, through the work of the Immigration Advisory Board that formed through years of holding vigils, uh, the community is now asking for the City of Bellingham to fund an Immigrant Resource Center. We were asked to make a banner showing butterflies representing the beauty of migration. And the idea to fold 10,000 origami butterflies was inspired by Hiroshima and the 10,000 paper cranes for anti-violence. Um, community members from Whatcom through Skagit folded thousands of butterflies and volunteers gathered them and strung them together. Um, something that really struck me about the butterflies uh, was how many people contributed. Um, some people folded one butterfly while some people folded hundreds. And when combined together, they created the beautiful, colorful strings of butterflies that the community presented as a gift to the city. Soon after hanging the butterflies, we were told that the city was going to take them down. So the community members who had worked so hard on the project decided to remove them themselves so that they could do it in a ceremonial way instead of letting them just be discarded by the city. And what happened to them is that they ended up finding homes in the community um, because when people found out what happened, um, cafes and restaurants, clinics and stores and other businesses volunteered to host the butterflies in their windows to show support for a city funded immigrant resource center. So through rejecting the gift, it actually created a lot of interest and kind of galvanized the community as people came in with stronger support. Um, and in artivism, often something unexpected happens like this, um, like where the city didn't think that the act of taking them down would create more awareness, but that's actually what happened. Um, so now the butterflies are hanging in lots of places around Bellingham and hopefully someday they'll hang in the Immigrant Resource Center. Um, yeah, so art builds, just community art builds are really fun and <laughs> they're just a great way uh, to open up space for community engagement with movement work. Um, people of all ages with all kinds of interests and life experiences and different skills can come together and share stories and learn about each other and learn whatever is bringing them together for that particular build. 
And similar to showing up uh, for picket lines, art builds our spaces for connection and learning together and building solidarity. So we're excited about you all's upcoming art builds uh, and really looking forward to seeing what you make. And passing it off to Edgar. Thank you so much. Yeah, we, we want to work together on that as we prepare for the, the march. Well, it was absolutely incredible. Such beautiful imagery and amazing stories. Thank you so much. And thanks for being here as well, Edgar. We're excited to hear from you too. Um, Edgar with Familias Unidas here in Skagit County. Uh, yeah, I think the C2C team has done, you know, some of the uh, really important work of really bringing a lot of the visuals and a lot of the things that farm workers um, care about and that we talk about and making them really like colorful and very, um, you know, very striking and bring really helps with the messaging. Like this banner, this is actually from when we were on tour last October around the state in, um, uh, this was, I think, in Danny Wu Gardens in, um, in Seattle. And Tomas, uh, who's an executive committee member for the union, is holding up one of the banners that the C2C art team uh, made and gifted us last May during the farm worker uh, march here in Skagit County. So, you know, we try, we try to integrate a lot of the artwork that, um, Brenda and team has made and taken around, taken it around the state. And I think um, almost everywhere that we go, um, you know, people really always bring that up about how the art has been really, um, really nice and colorful to bring into the spaces. So I think for me personally, uh, Brenda was actually one of the first people, the first person to actually kind of encourage me to take photography um and documenting the movement a little bit more serious you know we started with here at Sakuma and stuff but along the way you know I never thought that you know it was just like taking pictures just to remember like events or things like that but eventually kind of just also started um you know taking pictures and um realizing you know I'm in this unique I mean talking to Brenda and everybody else they're like you're in this unique position where you're on the front lines and also, you know, have a camera and, you know, documenting all these things kind of from my perspective. And um, I think it's been really interesting to kind of explore that a little bit more. So, you know, along the way, learning a lot of like cool editing techniques along the way to kind of share some of the story. Um, and I don't know how to switch the PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, if you want to just let me know um, each time you want me to go to the next slide and I'll do that. Okay, yeah. Can you switch it? Yeah, and also I think it's important to capture different components of farm worker life other than just, you know, showing this is like something that I've been trying to like get away from of just showing, you know, like misery and like like almost like this sense of despair, um, you know, because it's not all it is for farm workers. You know, we have times like this, you know, it's celebrations. This was in Yakima uh, during some of the strikes in uh, 2020. Um, kind of uh, we had, um, um, you know, wrapped up some of the things, um, you know, a couple um, weeks later, um, um, there was good weather and there was a birthday party that was going on. So um, we got invited. Well, I got invited to this birthday party for this um, kid that's um, breaking the piñata. So, you know, I thought that was a really important thing, even with all the tragic things that are happening in Yakima that were happening at that time. There was still a lot of these things of bringing in community and um, having fun um, at the same time. So and also shows, again, just like a whole different component to to farm worker lives that it's you know it's not just about work that we also like to you know be with families and you know with your children and kids and celebrate so I think um, um, that's been something that I've been really really more wanting to kind of document and capture apart from 
the other like movement and component stuff, which I think go hand in hand. Um, can you switch? <clears throat> so this was also in Yakima. Um, and I think this picture, it's, it has Ramon here with the sombrero and the white t-shirt. Um, and he's kind of running a, uh, like a meeting outside of a strike at Jack Frost packing in Yakima. And here he was just calling for um, a vote from everybody there to see whether or not they would accept a worker that's kind of like off to the side, you can't see it on the camera, to be part of the committee. So um, the committee that was going to be um, representing the voicer, voices and the concerns of the workers to negotiate directly with the the company and management. So I think, you know, this, for me, I got this picture um, and you'll probably see a lot of pictures of Ramon in, in these, some of these slides, because I mean, uh, he gets, I mean, he's the union president. So he gets to, he has to be like upfront and kind of directing a lot of the, um, a lot of these conversations. So I sometimes can sneak away and take some of these pictures. Um, so, and I think it also shows, you know, democracy, real democracy at work, you know, from where it's needed the most, which is in people's workplaces. So, um, um, I thought this was a, a really good picture. And again, it's during a time of crisis and just how people can organize and still, um, um, do all these amazing things in, in the face of like this pandemic. So, um, again, I think um, um, I really like the picture and just because it demonstrates like that unity and also um, uh, just, you know, how how we organize, just trying to be as participatory and democratic as possible. Um, so yeah, next. Um, this was from last year at the Tulip strike. Um, and again, I think this picture demonstrates more worker power in a position of power. Um, um, and I, I, a lot of these workers are some of our members also at Sakuma, so they're familiar with the struggle and, you know, what it takes to actually get, get things uh, from your employer. So you can kind of see it in their face that a lot of them don't look scared at all, um, that they're, um, you know, you can see kind of like the resolve. Um, in their in the way they stand and the way they're looking you know that they're in here for until we win so i think that was what i really liked about this picture um, um let me see what else so yeah and again some of these were just hand-drawn signs artwork um you know put together like probably the night before of of um of the strike um, or even probably even there right on the spot. So, you know, again, it's just like, just to get the message out. We, um, um, a lot of the art that that's out there, um, gets put together right there on, on the spot. So yeah, um, next one. Um, so this was like my attempt to capture a different like tulip, uh, or this is in case, this case is daffodils. It was like around five in the morning and the sun was coming up. Um, off to the side, this is Ramon again standing. He was on a phone call with our lawyers. Uh, to his left, if you would have seen to the left and to the back on the street side, you probably would have seen like 20 different photographers with their huge cameras um, and lenses just waiting for this moment of the sun to peek over the mountains. But they were only capturing the, the daffodils and, you know, trying to make like this very, you know, I mean, for me, it's a very boring picture of flowers. Um, you know, and the other thing was like a total disconnect of those photographers not realizing that just a couple feet away from them, there was like 100 workers going on strike and being on a picket line, asking, you know, for justice. So, you know, this was like my attempt of kind of like capturing that sunlight, the flowers, but also, again, what, what we as a union really want, which is justice and the ones that really make the fields beautiful and nice is the farm workers. Um, and I think the other photographers were kind of just kind of like not wanting to see that. But, you know, I think with this picture, it's, you know, how we see the how we see the world and our labor um, and how we want to represent ourselves. Um, next one. 
Uh, this one was last summer. I took it on my cell phone. Uh, Marciano, uh, my colleague at work, uh, Lucy's here also. <laughs> well, I'm at the promotora's office uh, in Mount Vernon. So Marciano and I go in the mornings to talk to workers. Um, this was uh, on my phone, and I just saw that rainbow, and just all of it just like took a picture. Um, you know, I wasn't expecting like a worker to walk right in front of it or anything, but um, it just turned out really nice. And again, I think uh, just to be in those positions through organizing and um, talking to workers, sometimes you get lucky and take some of these pictures, um, which you know again. Um, bring like visuals to to the movement um and like recognize again the the beauties all around it that sometimes we miss um if we're just focused on like the politics and um all the other things so yeah i think um yeah I, this is one of the pictures that i really liked because it was like an unplanned and just uh kind of just like a spontaneous picture which most of them are the ones that i take there's never people like modeling or kind of like positioning themselves it's just kind of it is what it is like daily daily life thing so this guy is just going to cross the street and go to the other side you can kind of see in the bottom left that's the car um it's kind of like a little hill um on the other side is where the strawberry fields are but yeah i got i was able to catch this picture it makes him look like he's huge compared uh, right next to the the rainbow thing um next one uh, <clears throat> this is again, uh, this is Paulino. He's one of the farm workers also. Um, he was one of the leaders um, and committee members of the TULIP workers. Um, and when they were on strike and he helped negotiate some of the agreements with the company. He's also a great musician. Um, you know, here he's uh, showing off. He's playing the guitar with uh, a beer bottle. So he's playing the strings with the beer bottle which is one of his uh, many talents. He's a very, you know, if you see him perform live, if you come to our March, April 30th, you might see him there perform. Um, he's, you know, him and the banda is called Los Aferrados. They're also members of the union, farm workers. So this was at Alfredo's birthday party last year. Alfredo is one of our organizers as well for the union. And we're having a birthday party and the Aferrados were playing. So I was able to get this picture of, of Paulino um, playing and showing off his skill, um, you know, playing the strings with this bottle. Um, so I thought that was a kind of a cool picture. Um, and again, it's a big celebration. Um, all the community was there. It was really nice to have music and food and all these moments, you know, outside of work. Um, so next. Um, this was at Marciano's family's they were having a party for his sister who had come from um, Florida just to visit. Um, he threw a surprise party at the Tierra y Libertad Cooperative in Everson. Um, and it just workers, you know, it got really dark. So you can see the cars turning on their lights and stuff. Somebody had to go to like the store and buy those bulbs. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're doing. We're trying to like string them up so the party can continue. Um, because, I mean, it was like 10 o'clock already, so, but people still wanted to hang out and eat and listen to music, so somebody went out to pick, get those, those bowls and string them up, so I thought this was a cool picture, too, just the different colors and just uh, all the memories, you know, from, from being there that night. It was, it was really nice that I got invited there, too. Um, next one. And this one is also, I think, uh, it might have been earlier. No, what is it earlier that day? It was another birthday party. I think it was during uh, Ramon's, uh, Ramon, uh, his, uh, uh, that uh, uh, gender reveal party mm -hmm. for his birth, his, uh, for his baby that was almost due. Um, however, it was also his niece's birthday party. So they got their her a cake. And here is, she is you know, taking a bite out of the cake. Nobody was there to smash your face into the cake, which is an awesome tradition. But, you know, I think, uh, again, it's a lot of kids and a lot of birthday parties and just in each way that we can celebrate and have fun and we bring community in. Um, it's also part of like the farm worker movement and part of the organizing that, you know, we we try to do apart from just, you know, a bargaining agreement. And all. We also try to, you know, this is how we integrate organizing into our everyday lives. Um, next. 
Uh, this is David Bacon, actually. So David Bacon, he is a photographer, photojournalist, and author. He's also a really good friend. Um, and for the last couple of years, he's kind of been mentoring me and taking pictures and like, you know, giving me some of his techniques and stuff of editing photos um, and storytelling. So I took a picture of him when he was visiting here, I think, was it last year or two years ago or something like that? Um, so I just wanted to show a picture of David as well and uh, me practicing editing photos the way that he taught me by taking a picture of him and editing in a way that he he shows me, uh, he showed me, you know, he showed me always show the hands, try to show the eyes, something dramatic. So that's why like the clouds kind of look a certain way and how he's standing and looks very dramatic in the way that he taught me how to take pictures. Um, next. Um, this one was a photo in 2013 when the union was first organizing. Um, it was after a strike and a meeting with the workers. Um, yeah, and it's just people just hanging out. Um, you know, there's like a little girl running around and having fun while everybody's playing basketball and hanging out. So I thought that was a cool picture of the early days of a Familias Unidas. And again, this was just like unplanned stuff, just taking pictures on my phone and just for documenting things for, for myself and for, at that time, C2C. Um, next. Um, and this is the first day. This is actually the first time I ever went into the, to like, we'll see what was happening the first day Familias Unidas went out on strike. So you can see Rosalinda there on the right. I'm kind of like the middle left, the tall guy, that's Ramon. Um, and every, all the workers are around listening to Rosalinda, kind of like hearing her out about what are some of the options workers can do to organize. Um, since one of the workers, I think you can kind of see him in the middle with his head bowed. That's Federico Lopez, who was the worker that was fired um, for asking a raise for a raise for everyone else. So they're here, everybody's just discussing what to do next. And what they decided to do next was to go and march down to the boss's office and tell him that they want Federico to not get fired um, and um, or else they're not going to go to work. So this was like the first day of Familias Unidas. Um, you know, before it was even Familias Unidas, it was just a worker strike at Sakuma Brothers. So this picture means a lot again, because it was just me showing up and taking a picture um, um, just for, you know, for like nothing more than just like, oh, this is something that's happening and let's take a picture. So, so yeah, I think that was, um, I think that's pretty much it for my presentation, just some of the the things that I get to see while organizing. Wow, so special. Thank you so much um, for joining us. That was really, I feel really fortunate to gotten to witness that. It was such an amazing overview and just important times and yeah, just really moving. Thank you so much for sharing. Um. So we have about 10 minutes if, um, yeah, do folks have questions or could share comments um, for either Edgar or the C2C art team? I do have a question, but I would be very happy to yield if someone else does. I think you can just go for it. Go for it. And if folks want to put in the chat, if you're thinking of asking one, we can start us. Okay, go go for it, Janet. You can lead us off. Well, mm, I've had the experience of trying to uplift people to feel empowered to voice, to sing about what's going on. And there are many ways that one can do that when it's private. When you're trying to encourage people to manifest a visual that is go has a purpose has an end product it's going to go out and represent the whole campaign and one has no skill how do you because for me if i drew a picture that wasn't just filling coloring in a stencil if i drew a picture i would say man i wasted those resources this is crummy i don't like it it doesn't do justice to the campaign but so how do you both encourage people to start doing stuff so they get better at it and they feel participation, but also honor the fact that 
what the product is actually not great. You need to acknowledge that when they think it's not great, it's probably not great. So I would love to hear some responses about that, empowering people in the movement, not in necessarily in leadership. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think that, um, you know, like when we have art builds, uh, sometimes we have, um, most, most of the time we're doing um, work on cardboard. It could be for an action or like a vigil or a protest. And I think that um, people always, well, sometimes they will say, well, can you do it for me? And my response is that um, really we want, the signs are like voices. They're like your voice, you know, made material. And um, it's not about being perfect. It's about the feeling, you know, and I think that's also like one of my favorite um, signs are going to be the ones that the workers make in the moment because um, a lot of feeling goes and there's not a lot of time to repair um, and those are really meaningful um, but I think you know we all we we do like a banner drop where people can actually just like color in the lines so if people feel comfortable doing that and filling in I think um, I watched that process when we were in San Francisco for the It Takes Roots um, climate uh, conference that was happening there. And uh, we were at the Greenpeace warehouse and I got to participate and learn to just, uh, they had laid everything out and all you had to do was fill it in. So we learned to do that. And so when people turn up, they can just get their hand in and it's not scary. That's a start, right? And also making a sign and being told um, we're not looking for perfection. We're just looking for your voice on a sign. Yeah, and I think like similar to like being part of a chorus, like um, just reminding people that it's like when all when everything comes together, like it's the beauty of like the collective of all the different voices and like at art builds. A lot of times, kids will be making signs, and so I mean you get all kinds of like funny <laughs> stuff, like weird little scribbles and doodles. And just when it all comes together, like it creates that just such a rich range <coughs> of, of voices um, and no single sign is standing alone. Um, I do hear you though, with your question about, um, you know, if you're like, if there's a certain um, outcome of something that you're trying to make and like, you know, what if it seems like somebody's skills aren't quite aligned with that. And I feel like that's just, you know, a case by case thing, like um, trying to like navigate, like if you're if you're somebody who's like coordinating an art build, like just trying to like notice where people are at and giving them tasks that um, seems like they match up with like maybe their skill level, like putting you know a, a color wash on a piece of cardboard or or like Brenda said, like. Um, also like pairing people up together can mm -hmm. be really nice. Um, yeah. So that like somebody can do an outline and then another person can color something in. Um, does that answer your question at all? Uh, it, it was your, th I'm interested in your thinking, not just the end product, how you're arriving at it. And yes, I, I, if I had another half an hour, I'd keep asking, but. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to say I really appreciate. Oh, Sol, go ahead. Go for it. Go. Well, it's just gonna be a quick comment. I just wanted to say I really appreciate um, all of your storytelling um, paired with the art. I think you know you can look at those pictures and they have impact on their own, but the storytelling that you bring to the art really placed me at least back in those moments. Um, or into those moments that I didn't get to experience firsthand. Um, and that in and of itself was really impactful. So I appreciate that a lot. So thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, I was gonna echo that as well. Um, just like, I think it creates accessibility when it comes to act activism too, right? Um, and I was thinking a lot about a lot the uh, photographs you took, Edgar, and um, seeing 
sort of myself in in the ways that you took pictures as like also an ar archivist um as someone who is like taking pictures in that moment showing joy in in spaces that you know um harmful things have occurred um and just showing like these portraits of like everyday resistance and that could be through birthday parties or like through baby showers or through just like hanging out with like your family. Um, and that's like something I really admire is like how you're able to capture that and capture how complex it can be in the many, um, the many different like um, characteristics and emotions that you see through your community. Um, so I just wanna see you captured it really well. And I like, it's encouraged me even to like pick up photography again because I think it's I've been in a place where I'm like I don't want to take pictures like uh, pictures are not for me right now um but I think for me it's just like I want to show that in my art and whatever art medium I have is like showing those complexities and who uh in like folks within my community like folks within the black community um and seeing that um sort of kept and archived for for generations to come um so i really appreciate it yeah me too i was just thinking how i mean it's just incredible how much you're able to capture in a 20 minute presentation of 10 years of organizing and it was just it was really moving um as someone who's like been witnessing it i just it just made me think of like whenever we are trying to share that history that that I mean if we could do that again in some way I mean we will have this filmed so that's powerful in itself but yeah this is really I mean both presentations were great just in terms of blending the history and like why different art was created in different moments yeah it's really incredible I'm also pretty sure I saw one of the the strike uh signs from the that you that the c2t c2c team shared in their presentation in one of edgar's pictures so i love oh, totally yeah i love the yeah. crossover um and that's I just, the thing if if we're making it, the art it's going to end up in a place where edgar's going to be photographed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so you know we never have to worry about that that those are being archived and um, his photographs are so beautiful that it's, you know, an amazing, um, it's kind of an honor to have them and we have them hanging in our wallet, our central here in C2C. So, you know, um, there's just a really nice cross kind of um, creativity uh, and support and, you know, it works out really well. Drew, I saw you come off of, yeah, you want to go? Yeah, sure. Just one, yeah, one last quick question. Definitely wanted to echo what other folks were saying. I feel like I'm so inundated with with images, but like every one of these images was so powerful and like said so much and super appreciate sharing those. Um, I kind of just wanted to ask, you know, as someone who's new to the area and new to the work, um, good ways to follow along with, with what y'all are doing and if there's a need uh, for like volunteers uh, or upcoming events. You mentioned the, the Skagit March, um, how to kind of stay in touch with that and, and plug into the work y'all are doing. Yeah, maybe this is an opportunity to transition if you want to respond to that, Edgar, and also give a quick update. And then we'll have updates on a couple other things, parts of our work and just um, overview of what's coming up for CAGJ before we wrap up. We're trying to wrap up in like 10 or 15. Uh, yeah, so I know like one of our things that it's happening pretty soon, uh, April 30th, uh, Farm Worker March. Um, if you want to volunteer or kind of like get plugged in on some of the updates, you can email us at marchacampesina87 at gmail. Um, and there you can just say like, hey, I'm Drew, I'm here for support or whatever. Um, we're going to have uh, art builds, like Brenda was saying. Um, we're going to have uh, trainings for peacekeepers and, you know, if you want to like help serve food or um, just a whole bunch of uh, all the tasks that need to be happen that happen, like you want to help fundraise and all that you can help. Um, there's plenty of ways to, to support the March. Um, 
So yeah, that's at least for us, that's one of the things that's coming down the line. Oh, and you never know when there's going to be a strike or some kind of thing. So that's always something that we always have, um, I've always have to be ready for. So. Do you want to share a quick update on anything, Edgar? Uh, yeah, so I know there was a strike a couple of weeks ago with roofers from Mount Baker Roofing. Um, that issue is sort of resolved, not really. Um, the roofers have um, reached out to some unions here, uh, like labor uh, laborers unions. So they're in the process of figuring out whether or not they want to go into a campaign to organize the company. So that's something that's still, um, we kind of like stepped out of that because that's not our uh, area of organizing. You know, we do farm workers, but the workers reached out to us because they used to be at Takuma and they, you know, they know, you know, with the stuff that we do. So we got them connected with a union that can help them out. So um, some of them have chosen to also start a worker owned cooperative of roofers um, that uh, CTC is help leading um, and organizing and doing the trainings. Um, there was, what else was there? Was there more things? I can't remember. Was there something? Oh, we had a tribunal. I think, uh, last week. <laughs> um, yeah, just a whole bunch of how uh, we beat the overtime exclusionality thing. So we beat that again. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, just like day to day still, there's like tons of things that I can't remember now. Have but. you heard about how things are going for the tulip workers this year oh that's right <laughs> that happened today there was a meeting between the worker committee and the company to address some of the issues hopefully everything will go smoothly this year and hopefully also um that agreement will carry on till next year it's not a collective bargaining agreement it's a memorandum of understanding it's not formally a union but you know the company uh has made concessions um to the workers and the committee there so hopefully they can carry some of those things and that work forward to next year as well. Right on. I have a quick question. Um, Edgar, there's this huge uprising of workers creating independent unions, not or organizing to create independent unions, whether it's Starbucks or Amazon. Some of them are backed by existing unions and some are not. Did it, has any folks come to you to say, how did you create an independent union? Has people come to you for um, it? Yeah, um, we get calls and stuff from all over the country um, about some of that stuff. And, you know, we've gone to like Arkansas and New York and California and different places, even here locally. Um, people always reach out to us um, to see how we started it. Um, started the union um yeah and i mean it's really not much i mean it's hard work but the science it's not that hard of a science it's just workers that want to organize and a community that's willing to support them i think that's that's pretty much what we tell people and you know i think they think that we're like these is like magicians or you know like um but it's actually just you know constant organizing never stop organizing and building with your community Thanks. Great question. So um, I'm sure there are other questions and stuff and just, uh, but just to respect everybody's time, um, I'm going to transition just to a couple other things that are coming up. Um, there is a new campaign website that was launched that I saw that both community to community and families who need us are listed as supporters um, of the campaign um, to stop the merger of Kroger and Albertsons um, that the Grocery Workers Union, United Food and Commercial Workers, UFCW has launched. Um, so we'll be following that and finding out how to get more directly involved, but there is a great website. Um, we'll post a link in the chat and you can download a fact sheet there. There's three really well-produced short videos about why the merger threatens workers and consumers, um, calling out that it'll probably increase prices. Hundreds of stores could be closed that I know Bellingham community has been dealing with that or up in Whatcom, um, 
small producers are less likely to be able to compete or be able to have access to the stores. Um, it threatens to create a monopoly that puts downward pressure on workers and the unions that represent them. Um, equal exchange, our favorite fair trade uh, co-op um, that we've worked with for years is really concerned about this and has talked about just how it's really important to have relationships with the stores in order to get the fair trade products into them. And that it just every time these mergers happen, they lose those relationships. So a lot of meeting, a lot of reasons why there's concern. And, you know, even our Washington state um, attorney is suing along with other states. So um, this is going to be a big ongoing fight um, this year. And um, CAG will be discussing how to, to support that in upcoming meetings. Um, and then in our, our campaign, um, to oppose the Gates Foundation's push of industrial chemically based agriculture in Africa. Um, it's really kind of heating up for us, even though we've had a, actually a very big year of trying to defund the Alliance for Green Revolution in Africa, AGRA, which has really been pretty successful. But um, we're doing a first meeting of its kind for us of having the seed working group of the Alliance for Food Sovereignty in Africa is going to report back to um to sorry my son was just coming in um the seed working group is going to do a report back to the u.s food sovereignty movement um because there's just so many things happening that um the u.s movement really should and can play a role in trying to stop um what the Gates Foundation and Agra are pushing. So that was supposed to have happened this morning, but um, for different reasons with our African partners, just couldn't do it today, but it gives folks more time to um, register. So it's gonna be happening in two weeks on Tuesday, April 4th at 9 a.m. Um, in order to you know involve our African partners in later time zones, obviously. So just invite folks to um, come just to learn more or, find out how to get involved as well um, in that work. Um, and, and I'm really excited that a lot of folks from U.S. Food Sovereignty Alliance and National Family Farm Coalition are going to be participating as well. So just trying to build those alliances between the U.S. and African food sovereignty movements. Um, so um, we also have, uh, we're bringing um, one of the staff members of the Alliance for Food Sovereignty in Africa is an Ethiopian activist named Kirabel Tadeli, and he is, we're bringing him here from Dallas, where he, he lives actually in, in exile, um, for, um, he also co-produced the short film series that we made in the last year called Rich Appetites, and we're launching the the films for the first time publicly um, they're on a, all available on a website, but we're doing a first in-person event um, to celebrate the films um, at Town Hall Seattle this Saturday from 7 to 9. So I hope some of you can come. Um, be Carabelle and also Derek McDonald from Black Star Farmers is going to be speaking. Um, we were hoping a Kenyan activist named Daniel Maingi that we've worked with forever was going was supposed to have been able to come but couldn't get his visa. But it's really exciting that the conversation after the film will be between Derek um, and Kirabel and then Ashley Fent from CAGJ who produced the films. So that's this Saturday. Um, and then we have a lot of events coming up as part of the, the next um, speaker in the series. It's the third Tuesdays of the month. So we'll have one again as Beverly Natus on April 18th and then another artist that we haven't nailed down quite yet, but in May and the art making workshops, one in April and one in May. So we'll send that out to everyone. Um, but like I said, um, part of the purpose of the April one will be to make signs and banners um, to bring with us to the Farm Worker March in Skagit Valley. So we'll be in touch with C2C and FUJ just about messaging and yeah. And also just totally inspired by all you make for your own organizations and have always wanted long, beautiful ribbons on CHJ banners. So hoping to make stuff like that too. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, um, Deb, did you want to make the announcement about summer school? Yes, thank you. I was sending links to the chat. So if you yeah, haven't put you. on... All the links to everything Heather was saying are in the chat, and we'll also send them in a follow-up email 
Um, so look out for that this week and the we'll share details about the recording of this event in that email as well in case you want to share with others. That said, um, in previous meetings, we spoke about starting the Summer School Organizing Collective, but we've decided to actually postpone summer school or the Rise Up program, which has historically been summer school. We're moving into the winter to accommodate more folks being able to come since usually people are really busy over the summer. So if you're still wanting to collaborate on that, know that it is happening. Um, the timeline has just shifted slightly and we'll be in touch about that as well. Um, any yeah. final comments, questions, concerns, thoughts before we close? Happy spring, happy spring, happy spring. Oh my goodness, <laughs> yes. I just put like an announcement in the chat, <laughs> but feel free to like send that out at the at the end. It's just um, Friendly Hmong Farms is trying to uh, create a Pacific Northwest BIPOC farmland trust, um, and they're looking for support from uh, community organizations and folks. Uh, yeah, community organization and individuals. Um, so feel free to take a look at that. And that just reminded me. Just friendly uh, was. In summer oh, yeah. school. Oh, yeah. Friendly was in summer school. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Small world. Cool. Yeah, Small world. Connection. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. And um, our hikeathon last May, that, you know, you were there at the beginning, Edgar, was, was with um, Naima Clark and Nurturing Roots. And we just found out that there was an action over the weekend that because they're being threatened with being pushed off that land where Nurturing Roots is based in South Seattle on Beacon Hill. So we'll be following that and um, just trying to provide whatever support we can. So just heads up about that. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. Really appreciate everyone be, for being here. And um, yeah, it was really, really special. Thanks thank again you. to the C2C team and to Edgar. Oh, hi, Cleomi, our thank favorite CAGJ baby. Well, I should say favorite, one of our beloved babies involved right now. So exciting. Thanks for showing her, Noelle. Thanks Give her for being a little here. smooch on the cheek. She's looking so cutest thing in the world. Uh, Thank you for having us. And um, I hope you. we get to see you all in April 30th for the Marcha Campesina. Really yep. be cool to see you. Thank Can't you. wait. Yeah. Yeah, thank you all. Well, thanks for joining y'all. Good night. Bye. Bye.